Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 3, Lesson 4, Solving Ratio Problems Using Algebra. So, you know, we've had a couple days where we solved ratio problems, some of them involving yeesh, complex fractions, right? And then in the last lesson, we reviewed some basic algebra that involves fractions and introduced the, te the technique of cross-multiplication. Right, to take a, an equation that had two fractions equal to each other and then rewrite it so that it didn't. Today what we want to do is we want to solve some of those ratio problems that we did maybe even back in both lesson one and lesson two of this unit, but to use algebra to exclusively do it. Now on some of these problems, you're going to see other ways to do them, maybe by just scaling the ratio up or down, and that's awesome. We never ever want to discourage you from knowing multiple ways of doing a problem. But we want to kind of use this technique now so that when ratio problems get a little bit messier later, we have a nice algebraic way to solve them no matter what. So let's get right into it with the first exercise. Here we go. Comparing ratio techniques, exercise number one. A bleacher with fans of home team and fans of the away uh, is filled with home fans of the home team and fans of the away team. There we go. The ratio of the number of home team fans to away team fans is 5 to 2. There are 26 away fans. Letter A, what is the ratio of home team fans to away team fans in terms of a fraction? All right, well this should be very, very easy, no big deal. So let's just do this one together. We specifically want the ratio of home team fans to away team fans. Well, we were told that the number of home team fans to away team fans is five to two. So that's basically it. Five, let me just go home fans to two, that's not a two, to two, away fans. It's amazing how I can even say the word two but write the number five. It just doesn't seem to, to be possible. And there it is, right in letter B. All right, so talking about letter B, let's take a look. Let H represent the total number of home team fans in the bleacher. Fill in the missing part of the equation below. So what, what should I put in this missing denominator? Pause the video and think about that for a second. Well, if H represents the total number of, of home fans, and I know there are a total of 26 away fans, then that's what I want down here, right? If I'm setting up equivalent ratios, five home team fans to two away team fans must be the thing I don't know, right? The number of, of home fans to the number of away fans, right? And now the beautiful thing is, I have something called a proportion. An equation that has a fraction, 5 halves, equal to a fraction, h over 26. Let's take a look at letter C and what we're going to do with that. Letter C. Solve the equation in B to determine how, how many home team fans there are in two different ways, just by multiplying both sides and by cross-multiplying. Awesome. So let's do it. Now one thing I'm going to do right away is I'm going to actually sort of flip-flop the equality here. In other words, I'm going to rewrite this equation as h divided by 26 is equal to 5 divided by 2. Side note, that's called the symmetric property of equality. That's a term you absolutely positively don't need to know. But this idea that anytime you have an equation, right, you can always just spin that equation on its equal si sign if it makes it easier to think about. And for me, I oftentimes like having the variable that I want to solve for on the left so that at the end of the day, at the end of the problem, I can say h equals blank and I'm reading it from right to left, right? Um, all right. That being said, I'm sorry, from left to right. I, I gotta think about my own orientation here. So here it says solve this thing by just multiplying both sides. And by that, what I mean is that I've got h divided by 26 equals five divided by two. So I can literally solve this by just sort of undoing what's been done to the variable h, and that is specifically division by 26. So those two cancel, and now I just have to figure out what five halves of 26 is. Right, one half of 26 is 13. Now I just do five times 13 and I find 65 as the number of home team fans. Now on the other hand, right, if you don't want to think about it this way, you can always solve a proportion, which is an equation where a fraction is equal to a fraction, all right, by doing cross multiplication. So 
I can also just do the problem as follows. h divided by 26 equals 5 divided by 2. I can cross multiply. 2 times h is 2h. And then I have to do 26 times 5, which if I've got a calculator, that's completely OK. On the other hand, if I don't have a calculator, I might on the side of my paper have to kind of figure that out. That's 130. And now to solve this equation, I simply need to divide by 2 on both sides. And again, maybe you got to bring this over here and do 130 divided by 2. Maybe you don't. I don't know. You know, depends on how much you're using a calculator and how much you can do in your head. But either way, <coughs> h is 65. <coughs> now, both of these methods work great. All right. Um, the one that is sort of more general is the cross multiplication because it will always take a situation where you have a fraction equal to a fraction and produce an equation where all you have to do to solve it is divide. All right. Let's keep going. All right. So the whole point today is to use that one of those two algebraic techniques after we've set up you know, the, these ratio equations all right, to solve for whatever quantity we're looking for. Let's see how that pans out in exercise number two. Jim and Mike are playing a card game where they record points. The ratio of Jim's points to Mike's points is 4 to 3. Jim scores 32 points. Let M represent the number of points Mike scored. Set up an equation that can be used to find the value of M. Solve it by cross multiplying. So this problem is very specific, right? right? What we know is we know the ratio of Jim's points to Mike's points is 4 to 3. So maybe I'll even kind of start by just setting that up. 4 points for Jim to 3 points for Mike. Right? That's our fundamental ratio. By the way, we could set that ratio up in either order. We could put the 3 points for Mike in the numerator and the 4 points for Jim in the denominator doesn't matter at all. Because it was written as 4 to 3, that's why I did it this way. Now, what do we know? We know Jim scores 32 points. And basically what we want to do is we want to, if Jim's points are in the numerator on the left, we want Jim's points to be in the numerator on the right. So in other words, this is going to be equal to 32 points for Jim, right? And what we don't know is how many points for Mike. So we use a variable for it. Now, I know this is a lot of writing. I get that. Maybe you don't need to do all this writing. But I'm trying to just be very careful about making sure that I get all the numbers in the right place. At the end of the day, what I now want to solve is the following equation, though. Right? Stripped of all those words, I want to look at 4 thirds equals 32 divided by m. And I want to solve it using cross multiplication. So I'm going to multiply 4 times m and get 4m, and then I'm going to multiply 3 times 32, and I'm going to get 96, right? Then I'm going to divide both sides by 4, right? And again, maybe on the side of my paper, I have to do a little 96 divided by 4, right? But one way or another, I end up getting m equals 24. So Mike scores 20. Four points. Now again, I don't want to take anyone, anything away from somebody who might say, well, if I've got 4 over to 32, I'd multiply by 8. So 3 times 8 gives me 24. That is a wonderful thing because it means that you understand the idea about scaling a ratio here and there. But the whole point of what we're doing today is to look at a different technique that we can use to solve these problems, specifically to use algebra to solve them instead of kind of the scaling. Let's keep going. Here we go. So now let's just formally introduce this. What a proportion is. Literally, this entire time, we have been setting up and solving proportions. Look, at the end of the day, all a proportion is is an equation where there's a fraction equal to a fraction. That's it. You know, most often proportions come up in the real world when we, when we set two ratios equal to each other because they're equivalent. So let's take a look at this in exercise number three. In a cafeteria, the ratio of kids who bought their lunch to all kids was 2 to 7. 
there are 16 total students who bought their lunch, okay? Letter A, make sure you understand this ratio. Fill in the blanks below. All right, so what I'd like you to do is again, read through the problem, really, really read through it and understand what, the, what we're saying here and then try to fill in letter A on your own. Pause the video now and go ahead and do letter A. All right, now again, you gotta watch out, right? The ratio of the kids who bought their lunch to all kids was two to seven. For every blank kids in the cafeteria, blank kids bought their lunch. So what this ratio tells us is that for every seven kids in the cafeteria, right, two of them bought their lunch. Make sure you don't have it the other way around. That wouldn't even make any sense. Just think about it. If we had put the two in the first blank and the seven in the second blank, we'd be saying for every two kids, seven of them bought their lunch. And I'm just gonna go out on a limb. I don't think that's possible. Anyway, let's take a look at letter B. Let R represent, sorry, let T represent the total number of students in the cafeteria. Set up a proportion to find the value of T and solve for it. All right, so what we wanna do is we wanna set up a proportion, which is exactly what we did in the last problem, all right? Um, and what do we know, right? What we know is we know that for every two that bought, right, there were, let me get rid of that, there were seven total, right? Now, we were told that there were a total of 16 students who bought their lunch. So 16 bought, and what we wanna find is the total, right? So here's our proportion. Seven bought, two bought to seven total equals 16 bought to T total, all right? Now what we're going to do is we're gonna do a little cross multiplication. Two times T is two T. Seven times 16, maybe we do that over on the side of our paper, is 112, right? And now what we'll do is we'll divide both sides by two. Again, maybe over on the side of our paper, we're doing 112 divided by two. Remember when this was the whole problem, right? And we find T equals 56. So there are a total of 56 students, all right? Letter C is extremely easy. How many students did not buy their lunch? So in other words, they brought their lunch. They brought, they didn't bought. That's not right. Anyway, figure out how many students just, you know, brought their lunch, they didn't buy it. Well, this is pretty easy. There are a total of 56 students. 16 of them bought their lunch. So this is simply a subtraction problem. 56 minus 16, 40 students did not buy. Right, that's easy. And really, that's just to set us up for letter D, all right? So in letter D, it asks us, what is the ratio of kids who bought their lunch to kids who didn't buy their lunch. Reduce to simplest form, explain why this ratio should make sense given the original ratio. All right, I'd like you to work through this yourself. Go ahead and do it. All right, well, we want the ratio of the kids who bought to kids who didn't buy, right? Well, we were told that 16 kids bought, or maybe I should say buy, and 14 didn't. We'll just abbreviate it that way. Now there's your ratio, but I can put it in simplest form by dividing both the numerator and the denominator by eight, which will give me two bought per uh, five who didn't buy. Right, two bought per five who didn't. Now, why does that make sense? Well, we knew two out of seven total, two out of seven total bought, 
leaving five, who didn't? Right? Makes sense, right? If for every seven kids, two of them bought, then five of them wouldn't have bought, which means that the ratio of those who bought to those who didn't would have to be two to five, right? Probably could figure that out right up front. All right, let's take a look at one more problem. Exercise number four. In a library, the ratio of students with younger siblings to those without younger siblings was four to three. There were 42 students without younger siblings. Let Y be the number of students with younger siblings. Set up a proportion to solve for Y. Then find the total number of students. All right, I'd like to, you to try this problem all on your own. Go ahead. All right, well let's make sure, because there's a lot of words in this problem, that if you don't read carefully, you could certainly get the ratios all kind of mixed up. So what does that four to three ratio represent? That students with younger siblings to those without younger siblings. And of course, you could have a lot of kids without younger siblings for one of two reasons. One, they could simply be only children, right? So they don't have any siblings at all. And of course, you could also have kids who simply are the youngest sibling, and so they don't have anyone younger than them, no one to pick on, right? So anyway, those with younger siblings to those without younger siblings, four to three, okay? Then we're told there are 42 students without, exceptionally important, without, all right? So the 42 students that they tell us are without, all right? And the thing that we wanna find are the number of students with younger siblings. So what we've got is we've got that four to three, which is really the with to without, right? Now, we wanna keep the y, right, in the numerator, because that's, we're trying to solve for the number of students with, and we know that there are 42 without. All right, in order to solve this, I'm just gonna do a little cross multiplication. Three times y is three y. Uh, it doesn't look like a y. Let's erase it really quick and do it again. And still no. Dead spot. Okay, and then we've got 42 times four. All right, so that's easy, 168. All right, now I'm gonna divide both sides by three. All right, and again, maybe a little bit over here. We do a little division by three. Uh, getting a nice workout on long division today. And I'm gonna take up some space I shouldn't. And I find that there must be 56 students with younger siblings. 56 with, 42 without. The total number of students will simply be 56 plus 42 because you either have younger siblings or you don't. There's really no kind of getting around that. So we'll find that there are 98 total students. This blank, we're just supposed to have the 56 in, but my, my long division seemed to have gotten, gotten in the way. All right, let's wrap this lesson up. So what we saw today was how to use algebra to set up proportions and then solve them in order to tackle various ratio problems. All right, and we're gonna be using especially the technique of cross multiplication all the time when we set up and solve ratio problems. You will continue to use that process as long as you're in math in order to solve proportions. And of course, that was a new term as well today, right? A proportion simply being any equation, right, where there's a fraction equal to a fraction. All right, we're gonna see that word a little bit more in coming lessons. For now, I just wanna thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.